What's going on everybody? Rafael Pinto here and today we are going to talk about gluten. So the question is, is gluten healthy or not? Should you eat gluten or should you avoid it? Is gluten really that bad? Is gluten actually necessary for you? Those are all the questions that we are going to answer today and here. So first and foremost, what is gluten? Gluten is a combination of two proteins, gliadin and glutenin, found in some grains like wheat, barley or rye. And because they are found in such grains, they are found pretty much everywhere. In breads, in cookies, in cereal and in a lot of other things that we eat in a day-to-day -day life. Like pasta, pizza, beers, a lot, a lot, a lot of foods. Gluten intolerance is the incapability of people to digest it properly and people who do have gluten intolerance get symptoms like diarrhea, headaches, uh, fatigue, bloating, weight loss, amongst many others. So until a few years ago the scientific community thought that gluten was only bad for people with celiac disease, with gluten intolerance. Nowadays we know that that's not the case. There's actually three different types of reaction to gluten. The first one is wheat allergy, the second one is celiac disease and the third one is gluten sensitivity. But the real question is what's the probability of you having one of these? When it comes to wheat allergy it's expected that one in every 1000 people have it. When it comes to celiac disease one in 140 people and gluten sensitivity affects one percent of the population. This might not seem like much, like the probabilities are really low, but if you add them all together that's, that actually makes a really big number of people that have problems with gluten. Let's put it this way, if 100 people watch this video, one of them will most likely have a problem with gluten. So that's actually a lot of people that don't do well with gluten. The other question is, for someone that doesn't have any of these three, should they avoid gluten? And the answer is no. People that don't have any of these three shouldn't avoid gluten because they are actually missing out on some nutrients and some food that can actually be beneficial for them and prevent diseases such as cardiovascular diseases, diabetes, obesity, amongst many others. Because the foods that have gluten and the gluten itself are really really good for our bacteria, for our gut bacteria and they can actually improve your immunitary system. In reality nothing shows that a gluten-free diet can be healthier for people that have no problem with gluten. On the other side it shows that it can actually harm you not to eat gluten if you can do it. Because as I said you might be missing out on some nutrients and some bacteria that are good for our gut. Another problem with self-prescribed gluten-free diets is that it becomes really hard to diagnose someone with celiac disease because everyone is going gluten-free and when they go to get tested the results don't come out right because they are already gluten-free and they never actually know if they do have celiac disease or if they don't. Which is extremely important because even a small contamination can cause a lot of problems for people with real gluten allergy. That's why you see on the packages may contain gluten and traces or something like that, that just means that they are made in the same factory and even th that kind of contamination that they are made in the same factory can cause reactions for gluten intolerant people. In reality even if you have any gluten intolerance symptoms you should not adopt a gluten free diet unless it's diagnosed. The way to diagnose gluten intolerance can go from blood tests to biopsies and if the results are negative you should not adopt a gluten free diet. You should however adopt a healthier diet because you might have mixed symptoms and a healthier diet might just cure your supposed gluten allergy. So to conclude this video nothing shows that the gluten free diet is better for you unless you have any gluten problem or any gluten intolerance, a wheat allergy or gluten sensitivity. Uh, on the opposite side you should not adopt a gluten free diet unless it's diagnosed for your health and for the sake of good diagnosis. So that's the video guys, hopefully you enjoyed it. I know this is a big 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 topic right now so I try to make it short and precise. If you did like the video leave a like down below, subscribe to the channel if you're not subscribed already let me know in the comments down below what you think if you avoid gluten if you are going to start avoiding gluten after this video or if you are going to start eating gluten after this video if you have any topics that you want me to discuss please drop them down below on the comments and i'll be seeing you all in the next one